Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. We just got in a really cute group of fabrics called Catnip. So today I'm going to show you how to make a really cute bag. You can take this shopping with you. It's the simplest of all tote bags. All you need is the panel, some straps, and then we're going to line it. So these are the fabrics. It's got four cats per yard. The fat cat is really cute. So we're going to take this over to the workroom and I'm going to show you how to whip up a bag. Here's all we need for the bag. I'm using a panel that's one half yard. You don't have to use a panel. You can use a half a yard of any fabric you like a lot of. We also need one half yard for the lining of the bag. And then we only need one eighth of a yard for the straps. And then we're going to need a small little teeny bit of batting to make those straps padded. Before I cut any of these items to size, I'm going to steam press them severely so that everything gets put back straight if your cat's a little bit crooked and everything will shrink up just a little bit. I'm going to cut the bag 17 and a half inches wide and 20 inches tall. But before I cut, I'm going to separate the two panels here and turn this cat around so that he is right side up. And then I can cut all four layers at the same time. The straps I'm going to cut at the same time, they're going to be 20 inches by 4 inches. The last item I need is a couple of thin strips cut 7 eighths of an inch wide by 20 inches long for each one of the straps. Now we're going to stitch the bag front to back. We're going to do the outside of the bag and then we're going to do the inside of the bag. So this guy, I'm just going to turn it around, right sides together, and I'm going to leave the top open, but I'm going to sew down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side. Now I'm going to use about a 3 8 inch seam allowance here. I want a little more seam allowance than what I would do if I was making a quilt. If you have a serger, you can serge these edges. It just gives them a little bit more stability. So I've stitched around the three sides and I've left the top open. Now we're going to do the same procedure for the lining, except we need to leave an opening on one side of the bag. So I'm going to stitch down and back tack and leave about six inches open and then sew the rest of it. This opening is how we're going to turn our bag and lining right side out. The next step is to put what's called a gusset in the bottom of the bag. And that way our bag has a flat bottom on it. So we are going to, let's reach inside here a little bit so I can grab the separate layers. What I'm going to do is fold this up here. So I'm going to put this seam right on top of itself. I'm folding it along the diagonal there and I want this seam right on top of itself. So you can kind of open it up and feel if you've got it flat. Once you've got it flattened out, we're going to make a mark right across here. I'm going to use a pencil and then we're going to stitch that. So what I want is a straight line there. So I've got a ruler that has a 45 degree line coming right from the corner there. And I'm gonna put that light white line along the edge. And I'm going to slide this down so that my two inch line here is right on my stitching line. Then I'm gonna draw right across there very lightly. None of this is going to show because it's all going to be inside the bag underneath. 
So now I'm gonna stitch right across there and then I'm gonna mark the other corner and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the outside of the bag. To do your second corner here, you wanna have your seam allowance flat there. And so I'm just gonna pull it open a little and finger press it like this. It's not necessary to iron it, but that will keep this facing the same way that that is. And now I can draw and stitch across here. So this gusset here is what's going to give our bag its boxy shape. So if I were to turn this right side out now. It has a um, rectangular shaped bottom and that will help it sit flatter when you load your groceries in. Now we can trim off these extra flaps here or you can tack them to the side here or tack them to the bottom. It doesn't really matter. I usually just leave them like this and when they go into the bag they're not gonna be in the way. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing to the corners on the outside of the bag. Here's the bag and the lining, and we've got all the corners done, and we're going to turn this one right side out. And if you like, you can iron or finger press this seam so that it's nice and flat. Once you use the bag for a while, it probably won't matter. It's going to be really, really flat anyway, but it is nice to start out with it nice and flat. And you can do the same thing to these ones. Just pull it a little bit to one side, and you can just iron it like this. Now we're going to work on the straps. To make the straps, I'm going to do a lot of ironing here. I'm going to iron these in half. Then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna take the bottom and fold it up to that first ironing line. And I'm not gonna iron right over that middle of it there. I'm staying off of that part. I'm just flattening this part out. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the top. I'm gonna iron it with that raw edge, just about meeting. So it's right on that same line. And again, I'm staying off of the middle so that it will fold up easily afterward. Now we're going to open the bottom up and put this little bit of batting right in there. We're gonna fold this over it and then we're gonna fold the whole thing in half. And then I'm gonna press it again. And because we cut the batting a little bit narrower than this part, it folds up in there pretty well, but it, it takes up all of the space. Now you might wanna stick a couple of pins in here because we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and the pins will just hold it there so nothing will slip while we stitch it up. I'm going to stitch everything together an eighth of an inch in from this edge. So I'm near the edge of it, but not too, too close. So when I'm stitching this, I'm kind of pulling this as I go, and that helps it lay really flat. Now we are going to sew again an eighth of an inch from the other side, and that'll make it look pretty and it gives it extra strength. Now we're going to trim the excess batting off of both ends and then we are going to iron it really, really flat. Now we're ready to put our handles on, and this is about where I want the handle. Of course, I'm gonna have to stitch it like this, and then when we put our lining in, it will flip right side up. So you really don't have to mark where you're putting them, you just have to pin the first one in place. So let's put that there. And then to, to find where this one goes, Match up your seams here, match up the middle, fold it in half, and then just put this right in that same spot. And we'll pin that. And we'll use these 
places to mark the handle that goes on the other side. So to put the other handle on, we're just going to line it up with the handle that's on this side. So pull it back a little so you can see. Pin that guy there. Straighten everything out and get this one lined up with that handle and pin it there. Now I'm going to stitch these on with the machine and I'm going to back tack and put a lot of stitching here because there's a lot of stress on these handles. So it's going to get stitched again when we sew the lining on, but right now I'm going to go back and forth quite a bit. I'll do that for every handle. Now we're going to put the lining in the bag. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to put the bag and the lining right sides together. Now since this is right side out, it's going to go inside the lining right now. So we're just going to put these in here. And we are going to stuff that down there. And we're going to line up the edges here. So I'm going to start at the side seam here and I'm going to put a pin in and then we'll go to the other side seam and we'll put a pin in there and you can put a few more pins in if you like we are just going to now stitch all these raw edges together all the way around so we've just got a big circle we're going to stitch so I'm going to start here and I'm just going to take it to the machine and stitch it up. We've got it all stitched together all around the top here. Now we need to turn everything right side out so the lining will go in and the outside of the bag will be on the outside. So I'm just pulling everything through that opening we left in the lining. And now the lining will go down inside the bag here. But before we put it all the way in there, we want to sew up that opening. So we can just take this to the machine and top stitch it right there. If we use white thread, it really won't show much at all. The bag is all finished. These are so much fun to make. We've got both cats here. We've got the fat cat. Now each yard of this fabric has four different cats. So you can make two bags if you get a yard. There's that guy and that guy. And it's really nice with the light lining because then if you put things in there, you can see inside there. And you can really hardly see where we stitched it up. We've got the gusset on the bottom so that it's got a little bit of flatness on the bottom. It just makes it easier to pile stuff in there. The panel also comes with a light background. So if you want to make a light colored bag, we've got the fat cat and the jeweled cat. I know they're upside down there. And then we've got this beautiful cat and that guy. And they all make just wonderful bags. So I am going to go to the market now. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on the cat tote bag. We are going to have another giveaway. We are going to give away this beautiful jagged edge runner. This is Easter themed, really cute bunnies in it. And we've got Easter eggs on the back side. So if you'd like to enter, we will put a link in the description below and then maybe you'll be the lucky winner. Thanks for watching.